will have a short lecture regarding Bitrock and their formation from uh, uh, our colleague uh, Yanis Saitis. He's a PhD candidate at the Faculty of Geology and Geoenvironment in our university. His, uh, his PhD is related to Bitrocks and how they are forming, so he will study the geochemical uh, part of the Bitrocks. Uh, Bitrock is a hard formation uh, that it forms uh, through the participants of uh, the and gravel, uh, fine particles, uh, plastics, biogenic, uh, particle, and sometimes uh, we can find some pathogenic artifacts in the beach. What I mean by pathogenic uh, artifacts uh, was uh, in Slavosa. Most of the was consumed in the beach. <laughs> And uh, in, the recent, uh, in the picture, uh, a Coca-Cola lead was found uh, also consolidated. Uh, so uh, by these uh, artifacts, we can understand how fast uh, the consolidation and the formation of the picture it is. Um, also, uh, uh, the rectification uh, usually takes place uh, in the detectable zone, uh, but in some studies, uh, they found uh, out that. Uh, uh, the supertidal and subtidal zones are uh, also uh, places that uh, we can find uh, types of pictures. Um, the cement uh, for the picture is commonly uh, calcitic and uh, aragonitic, uh, but uh, there are uh, differences in the composition in magnesium uh, and in some cases uh, in silica. But when we are talking about uh, magnesium, we have some polymorphs like the high magnesium calcite, uh, which, which is a polymorph of uh, calcium calcite with over four mole of percentage uh, per weight of uh, the calcite. And um, there is also the low magnesium calcite, uh, which is lower than what, four moles uh, of percentage, um, where we can find it in the meteoric water. Uh, so uh, the Vandal zone uh, is a uh, place where we can find the magnesium calcite, uh, the meniscus, and uh, it, it uh, forms uh, sparic formations in the picture. Um, so, where the course? Um, in studies, uh, uh, they um, it was reported uh, that the most of the beach rocks uh, are between 0 uh, and 40 degrees of latitude north and south, uh, south hemisphere, but mostly is common in the 20 and 40 degrees of latitude. So areas like Mediterranean, the Caribbean seas, tropical and subtropical uh, Atlantic coasts and atolls uh, of the Pacific Ocean are places that uh, can uh, 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 have uh, beach rock uh, formations there. So, cl colder climates disturb the lithification and um, uh, in general uh, the beach rocks uh, prefer stable warm uh, temperatures uh, of water uh, in order to uh, start the lithification and the uh, cementation process. So, coast also uh, coasts with large tidal ridges uh, doesn't not provide the time uh, for the lithification to occur, and regions with micro uh, tidal code, micro tidal codes uh, provide uh, the proper uh, conditions, uh, like in Mediterranean. So an example here of a micro uh, tidal uh, a place is here, which in uh, a time of two hours, as you can see on the left um, image. I will have a high tide and the low tide on the same beach of, as you see, is more or less at 10 to 20 uh, centimeters. So, uh, there are theories about uh, the formation of the beach of. Four are the most common. Uh, the first one is the um, precipitation of the high magnesium calcite uh, due to the supersaturation of calcite in the seawater. Uh, and, uh, and the second one is the pers precipitation of high magnesium calcite due to the uh, degas uh, of uh, carbon dioxide from the pore of the water uh, of the bit sediment, which helps the precipitation uh, and it helps to, do, to be faster. 
Uh, also, the non admissible site can occur uh, in the first uh, groundwater uh, and the interaction between the meteoric water and uh, seawater. Um, the most common place, uh, zo the most common zone is the subaerial uh, zone. And um, through the biological activity, uh, we have um, a creation of uh, calcium carbonates through uh, the lifespan. So, uh, we talked a little bit about the zones that uh, be, uh, the cement can be formed of uh, the beach of. Um, from um, uh, the ground, the most uh, inner zone to uh, the water zone, um, we can uh, talk about um, the uh, subaerial uh, zone, the supra, the, the or uh, supra tidal. Uh, where, um, as we talked before, the low magnesium calcite can occur uh, and um, between the supertidal and subtidal zone, we have the mixing zone where both uh, waters uh, can have a contact and we have also uh, the provision of magnesium from uh, the uh, sea water. So um, there uh, we have uh, more uh, magnesium in order uh, uh, to be uh, to, to form the high magnesium calcite. Uh, in general, the precipitation of uh, the mineral that possess the semen uh, are controlled by uh, the water acidity and the supersaturation of the water in uh, calcite. Um, in uh, in the most of the studies, um, uh, they have mentioned that uh, this saturation uh, needs to be around uh, needs to have a, uh, around. 50% uh, of seawater, but if we rise uh, the temperature, then we need uh, less seawater um, uh, saturation um, uh, in order to have the calcium carbonate to uh, consolidate. And also, if we have higher uh, decays of uh, the carbon dioxide, then the pH rises, and then we have faster um, consolidation uh, of the bitter. Um, so, all the, the formation theories and in general the formation uh, have some parameters uh, in order to uh, occur um, the picture. So, uh, what are those? Uh, some of them are the physical chemical uh, parameters where the temperature of the water and pH, as we talked before, are uh, mainly factors. Also, the salinity of the water. The pressure of uh, the dissolved carbon dioxide in the water, uh, the concentration of uh, magnesium ions, and also the presence of phosphate and sulfate that may um, uh, uh, change the acidity of uh, the water. Also, organic material and the, uh, the presence of the microbes take uh, the uh, place a big role uh, in the formation of a beach rock. So all of them together, what they are doing for us, uh, they are a little bit headache. But to add more headache uh, in our uh, in our uh, science, we have to take all this account. We have also to plus uh, the consideration of the wave rhythm uh, on a beach, uh, which is the magnitude and the distribution of the wave energy along the beach, the, uh, the sedimentology which is uh, the grain size, the permeability of uh, the sediment, which helps the filtration of the first fresh and uh, groundwater, and also the accumulation of uh, the sediment. And uh, all of this, uh, we, 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 have, we have to plus also the coastal hydromorphic dynamics. So, and a little bit to understand more uh, uh, the environmental story, we have to uh, take also account the chemistry of uh, the beach rock. Here, uh, more or less, we're talking about the dissolved carbon dioxide in the water, uh, which is dissolved and uh, forms carbonic acid, which also uh, dissociates in biocarbonate, biocarbonate and carbonate uh, that later on they react with the uh, dissolved calcium in, in the water and they um, form the car uh, carbonic calcite that uh, in the proper conditions it can um, 
uh, consolidate, uh, precipitates and try and start the consolidation of the sediment. But also, um, the, uh, uh, by the photosynthesis of, uh, of the carbon dioxide from uh, the algae and, and other plants in the water, uh, we have the enhance of the precipitation of the carbon uh, of the carbon calcite. But if we rise the, the pH, the temperature, the salinity, we may have also a dissolution of uh, the carbon calcite instead of the precipitation. Um, so um, we have uh, also the biological formation of the beetroots. Uh, first of all, we have it through the photosynthesis of algae. Uh, secondly, uh, from uh, the bio, bio microbial uh, degradation of organic uh, matter, the bacterial uh, calcification, or let's say a biocalcite. Uh, in the first and the second case, uh, we have uh, the bind of uh, the carbon dioxide, and that also uh, that helps the precipitation of carbon calcite. And in the third case, uh, we have um, a calcite, carbon calcite that is derived from the bacterial processes. Some of the processes is the ammonification of amino acids, the urea hydrolysis, and the, which is the most common, and the sulfate reduction that binds a calcite from the water. So, how do we examine uh, the pictures um, in the uh, exhibit? With a graphic polarized microscope uh, that uh, we, we have made first the picture in these sections, and then we have a spectra like um, the one uh, on the right bottom corner here. Uh, second, we use also uh, the XRD diffraction. Uh, where we determine uh, the mineralogical position. Um, plus, uh, we're using also scanning electron microscope with um, combination with the EDX, we can pinpoint uh, the, chem uh, the chemical analysis uh, in the microscope. And also we're using the en energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence spectro spectroscopy, where we have an idea of the chemistry of a bulk sample of a beetroot. So, when we are talking about uh, microscopy, uh, we take uh, some images like this one, um, where through the polarized optical microscope, we observe the texture of the high magnesium calcite. Most, um, uh, you can, we can find some textures like a demicritic texture, as you can see on the left uh, image here, and also around all the particles. Uh, that can be observed as rings or bladed. Here is mostly bladed. Um, and also fibrous and belloidal crystals that surround the grains, that surround the grains um, of the sentiment. Uh, this is uh, a shell fragment, just to say about the, its shape. And also we can find the aragonite um, that can be observed as irregularly distributed needles, a mycritic envelopes, and a somewhat fibrous rings um, in the most of the cases. Also, uh, we can find a sparitic calcite, uh, which is an ether glass, or let's say a pore filling, uh, that is grown as a secondary semen that indicates the agenesis from an already formed beetle. Here we may have a dissolution of the cement and again a recrystallization of it and having bigger crystals of calcite in the detector spa. It's probably another uh, other images of uh, microscopy of beetroots. Here you may see uh, very well um, uh, formed uh, calcite crystals. And uh, also here you may see the mycritic calcium calcite salmon. But in this case, as you see, the color is more brownish. Uh, this brownish color indicates uh, the presence of uh, the biological activity 
from Argai and the Mike. So here they work as material with the four ministers. As we talked before about the electron microscopy and the EDX, uh, these are two spectras from um, uh, CEM, uh, scanning the electron microscope. Um, here you can see the needle-like crystals of aragonite uh, in the pores. Uh, this is a pores of a uh, shell fragment. Uh, um, this is a very common uh, image. And here you may see um, it is like a coating around um, the grains and also the matrix. What is this matrix? Uh, it's very common between, uh, in the pores of uh, the beetroot, uh, where it's very, very, very fine uh, particles of the sediment that are all of them consolidated. They are cemented by the high magnesium calcite and they work as a, a pores uh, filling. So um, these beach rocks uh, are more uh, hard um, and more stable. Uh, when we're using EDH to determine the chemistry of um, the cement, um, here we take a measurement like this one, where we can find the weight percentage of each um, uh, element. And combine all together, we may understand, like here, we have calcium uh, high magnesium calcite. The high magnesium calcite is determined by the percentage of uh, um, the weight of uh, the magnesium uh, in comparison of the calcium. Uh, when we're using X, uh, an XRD, uh, which is used by, uh, we employed it for the identification of uh, the mineralogical, uh, the, the mineralogy of uh, the matrix uh, of a sample. Uh, we determine also the crystal structure. Um, every of these, um, except the uh, colored uh, peaks, um, every this uh, reflection here is counts how many times the X-ray uh, has hit the same type of um, of crystal. So uh, in this angle of 29, uh, uh, also 29 degrees, if I zoom well, we can find calcite. So, uh, by using a, a, a specific um, application, uh, the name is EVA, uh, we can understand um, what uh, minerals we have in a bulk sample of one gram. So, uh, for example, here we have quartz, which is the red peak, we have uh, the common calcite. Uh, those two are uh, indicates uh, the sediment, but also we have the high magnesium uh, uh, calcite, which is this one. Uh, we have dolomite, plagioclast, and calcite parts that together with calcite quartz consists uh, one of the most common minerals of uh, uh, beach uh, sediment, chloride and uh, serpentinite, um, that works uh, in the matrix of the beach. Also by using the HRF method, uh, the results are something like that, where we have percentages uh, per uh, weight of um, the uh, minerals, the, ox the oxides of uh, no minerals, uh, excuse me, uh, the elements, oxides of the elements, where uh, we mostly focus on the oxide of the calcium and magnesium that indicates um, the cement. And as you can see here, the loy, which is also a big, uh, a big uh, percentage, has a high percentage. Um, it indicates the loss of ignition. Uh, that uh, determine uh, that is uh, the burn already uh, carbon uh, dioxide. Except the major elements that we have here, uh, all the values, we have also the trace elements, but their values are in ppm, uh, where some of them may uh, give us more information about uh, the beetroots, like strontium, which is a trace element uh, very common of uh, 
the uh, seawater and uh, like this example we have here high values of chromium and nickel uh, which can indicate some specialities of, uh, um, of uh, the sediment. So all of these results we may combine them and have some uh, in comparison um, on the uh, on the places where you, they are derived to understand some mechanisms of uh, the formation of a beetle. So, thank you very much for your attention.